Hi, this is My Dignity Restored and my name is Wango Kanja. And today we are going to look at the consequences of sexual and gender-based violence. Today we are going to look at the consequences of sexual and gender-based violence. When I went through uh, rape, uh, there are consequences that came with uh, the violations. And we can look at um, first the physical uh, injuries uh, that a person might get uh, when they are struggling or trying to fight the perpetrator or the, trying to fight the perpetrator off. Um, so we can have broken bones, we can have cuts, uh, tears and abrasions, and we can also see uh, bruises. And this can be taken care of when a person presents themselves um, at the health center or any medical facility in time. Um, looking at psychological effects, and going back to um, my story uh, is a person is affected psychologically because this is, a, this is an action that was done against his or her will. And one of the psychological effects is um, suicidal tendencies. A person is always contemplating um, on uh, contemplating of her, on, on having suicide uh, because the person does not know how to deal with uh, the, the, the violence or the trauma that uh, they underwent. And um, apart from suicidal tendencies uh, or, think, or contemplating of having um, committing suicide, we also find that a person cannot digest or come into terms with uh, what the trauma that they have uh, gone through without someone taking through them a healing through a healing process for example counseling so looking at that um, individuals tend to withdraw uh, for some children, they will start uh, wetting their beds. Um, they will try as much as possible to just isolate themselves from either the family or friends and stay locked up in, in the house or if it's a child, they will not go out and play. And for adults, uh, the minute the person starts disengaging with the family or friends and they don't go for counseling sessions, uh, people tend to use alcohol as a coping mechanism and um, either alcohol or um, drugs or they become promiscuous because they are trying to digest or they are trying to come into terms with what happened to them. And because of this, then um, they are overwhelmed uh, by the so many emotions that they are going through. And they would want to hide behind um, either taking alcohol, drugs, or um, being in many relationships because they need to feel loved and they need to feel appreciated. and. Um, we need to understand that uh, most of the time when uh, survivors of sexual violence are doing this, it's, they don't do it knowingly um, and we need to help them to just understand what they are doing by talking to them or just finding solutions, for example, uh, suggesting uh, if they would go for counseling sessions. Uh, so that they are able to address their, their trauma. And then um, 
give them information on what um, the alcohol and drugs will do to them because at at point uh, at different um, different situations or different places if you're under the influence um, chances of you going through the same uh, violations is high because you you might be be very be very drunk you're very drunk and to a point where people take advantage of you and you get yourself in a situation that you did not expect um, for parents um, watch out for your your children um, uh, because some of the children when they're affected they start uh, wetting their beds, um, they tend to uh, keep away from the person. Maybe the person was very friendly to them, uh, maybe playing or just talking to them. But once you see someone, a child not willing to talk to someone, you might, you might take a step of trying to figure out what happened and what changed between the child and that particular individual and you may discover there's something that that person did and you can address it. Hey, this is my call to you to speak against sexual and gender-based violence and prevent, 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 prevent um, any form of uh, violence that you see uh, in your community or where you live. Um, I want you to reach out to us, uh, the Wangu Kanja Foundation. You can see the contacts below. And please subscribe, subscribe and share with your family and friends. The information might save a life.